everyone. Welcome to Lake Taylor High School here on Sports Beat 23. I'm Richie Babb along with Frank Lapoli and Mickey Irving. And it's tournament time, the dual team tournament. We're here for the region finals. The Great Bridge Wildcats and Salem here together. Both teams, Mickey, had a road to get here, some longer and harder than others. You have to earn the right to get here. And action started Thursday here at Lake Taylor. Great Bridge came into the Eastern Region duels, ranked number one in the area, and wasted no time disposing of Eastern District runner-up Mari, 71 to nothing. Kellum had to beat Princess Anne and First Colonial Thursday night just to qualify for the duels. They used these matches to warm up for a 42 to 20 trouncing of Peninsula District champ Denby and the right to meet the Wildcats in the semifinals. Beach champ Salem looked like they would win easily over Gloucester from the Peninsula. The Sun Devils jumped out to a 27 to zip lead. Gloucester rebounded, tightening the score to 27-25, going to the 189 match. The Sun Devils secured the win with a pin by Damon Schultz. Salem advanced to the semis by winning 36-25. It looked like the match of the opening round would be Western Branch and Lake Taylor. Western Branch got the match they'd hoped for, but the Titans wish they could forget. The Bruins disposed of Lake Taylor easily, winning 41-18 and advancing to the semifinals against Salem. Kellum's Ed Stacunas thought the Knights could hang with the Wildcats in the semifinals. Hung by the Wildcats would be a better guess. Great Bridge scored a tech fall and two pins before Kellum won the decision at 125. The Knights didn't see another win until a top-ranked heavyweight Jason Weiss decision Hauk of the Wildcats. Great Bridge advanced to their third straight Eastern Region final with a 46-6 win over Kellum. Western Branch needed to beat the Sun Devils for a shot at the rematch with Great Bridge after losing last week to the Wildcats. Salem got in the way, jumping out to an early 7-zip lead. Chris, the pit bull Viola put the Bruins on board with a major decision at 119, making the score 7-4. Salem won the next three weights before the Bruins came back with a decision at 140 and a pin at 145. The score, Salem 16-13 over the Bruins. After trading decisions at 152 and 160, the Bruins sent a wrestler to the mat in his first varsity match. He hung tough, but got pinned late in the third period. The Bruins needed at least a pin and a major decision when top-ranked 189-pounder Tony Hall took the mat. Wrestling out of his normal style, Hall lost, advancing the Sun Devils to the finals and a shot at Great Bridge. That's how they got here. It's down to two now, Great Bridge and Salem, the best two in the region. And these two teams have met before. We coach, talked to Coach Mike Taylor earlier about what he had to do to beat the Wildcats. Tonight we've got to win uh, some of those close matches that we lost in the last one. We need to win at 112 with Blank of Floor. Uh, he needs to take uh, Darnell this time. Uh, he lost, I believe, 4-2 to the last match, and I think that's one that's going to be real important for us. Uh, 125 with Copeland uh, taking on Beats, and that's going to be a real important match for us. Uh, 135, uh, our Bucree uh, up against Dustin. That's going to be a uh, real important match right there. Uh, and we just need to, uh, you know, pull it, pull together those middle weights, uh, wrestle a little bit above our heads, and uh, you know, I think we can stay with them. And the fact that these two teams have met before is somewhat of an advantage. I asked Coach Stevie Martin what he saw as Salem's strengths. The strengths are 103, um, the state state runner-up coming back, 112, um, two-time state place winner. Uh, 19 is a strength also for them. I'd also say 30 and 35 are both strengths for them. Um, both those guys are of a, they could switch weights at 30 and 35. Uh, Bukri has been at 35 during the year, but they might switch him to 30 tonight and bump up the 30 pounder Garcia, hoping that they'll sweep both weights there. But those are definitely uh, strengths. Well, Frank, that's how the coaches see it. How do you see the matchup tonight? Well, I tell you, I see it that uh, Salem has a long road to hoe, but Salem has scored the most points on Great Bridge than any team in the state. They've scored 24 points. They're on fire right now. They've wrestled well the last couple of weeks. It depends on what team from Salem shows up here tonight. In terms of the individual matchups, uh, Great Bridge has seven ranked wrestlers on the squad. Salem has five. But the first three weights were all in for a treat. It's very unusual that this late in the season there'll be two undefeated kids. Well, at 103, we got Hawk. Hawthorne against Chip off the old block Reyes. Both guys are undefeated. We're going to be in for a real treat at 103. And then at 112, we come back with the number one and number two ranked wrestlers in the area. And that could be the state finals right here. And then right after that, we have the number one and number three guys uh, in the region at 119. So the first three weights are, are important for Salem. They're going to have to pull an upset. 
They could win. Salem could win as many as six matches. That might not be enough. It looks like Great Bridge in a, in a big way tonight unless Salem can come up with some magic. The Wildcats and the Sun Devils, it's all over, but the wrestling, and that's soon to be underway. <sighs> and indeed, here we are, all over but the wrestling, and that's just about to get underway here at the 103-pound weight class. And guys, what are you looking for? Frank, what do you expect? Well, I tell you what, what I'm looking at is some great matches right here, right off the back. Chip off the old block Reyes against Jimmy the Hawk Hawthorne. Both guys absolutely undefeated. Interesting with the Hawk Hawthorne, he is 19 and 0 in junior high and 21 and 0 as a ninth grader. You don't have to be a maven. I can add that up. Come up to 40 and 0. 40 and 0 has not lost in scholastic competition against Reyes. The interesting thing on Reyes is, is he a, soft, a sophomore or a junior? I mean, Reyes is a junior. Reyes is a junior, was the runner-up in the state championship last year, and is one tough cookie. Uh, what I see in the first match is if uh, Jimmy the Hawk is going to have to keep Reyes at bay right off the bat. Uh, Hawthorne is explosive great takedowns and is also very good defensively. Remember when he upset uh, the Jewel, uh, Jewel Kid from, uh, but here it is, no more talking, let's lead to wrestling. Hawthorne, the Hawk from Great Bridge in the green and gold. Look at Chip off the old block, Reyes, got good stance, spreading his legs out, which is smart. That's gonna stop Hawthorne's sweeps if he's able to keep doing it. But the Hawk doesn't waste any time and, and he actually is on the offensive against the state runner-up. Reyes, very energetic, kind of looks like a water bottle. Right, there it is, I was expecting that. There's the John Smith single. It done just the way John Smith would do it, the two-time Olympic champion. And that's what I mentioned, watch for Reyes to, to try to build some points up right off the bat. Now watch for Reyes' signature move to try to arm bar him and tilt him right off the bat and see if he can get, he's gonna have to break the Hawk down first. That's a single, not, you know, just more or less using it to control. He's already scored the takedown. The score is two to nothing in favor of chip off the old block Reyes. Reyes coming in here, 22-0, and and as Frank mentioned, 21-0 and in his freshman season for Jimmy Hawthorne in the Great Bridge Wrestling. And this is an important one being an early match, Frank, because as you said, Salem needs to win a good number of these early matches to even be in it by the end. I mean, this is a really crazy thought, but, you know, uh, you, uh, Reyes is uh, second in the state. you got to favor him <laughs> over the over a kid that's 40-0. I mean, that's... Yeah. The, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, and there is what I was mentioning to you, is Reyes is lethal with this tilt, and if he can score this tilt, it's, it's going to be tough on the Hawk, and he is just so tough with this. Watch his shoulder, the Hawk's shoulder, and he's got him. He's got him. He's got the Hawk in trouble. The score now is... With the three, it'll be five to nothing if the Hawk can get off his back. The Hawk is giving it all he can. He's doing a heck of a job. But watch if you can see. You can't see it on the camera shot, but Reyes has such long arms. He's got the Hawk's wrist. See that? Oh, and that's a figure four. He pins the Hawk. And, and that's what a way to get win. started for Salem. As you said, Frank, Sale needs to win several of these early matches. I think you said five out of the first six in order to do anything, and the Chip Reyes starts right away by pinning the Hawk, and that's his first loss in years. Yes, it is, but Reyes shows why he is the number one wrestler in Tidewater, going against a very good wrestler in Jimmy Hawthorne, Rich, but you can't really be surprised by that pin. No. However, the important thing... Salem goes out to a 6-0 lead now against the Wildcats. And we're going to have an official timeout here so that the Salem wrestler, Blankafor, can get his headgear on. Uh, he was taken off rather quickly by Darnell. Both these guys coming out high energy. It's interesting to see the Salem guys line up and uh, sort of, it's almost like a gauntlet getting their um, wrestler out to the mat. Which we saw the team from New Jersey do over at the duels a couple years ago. Oh, yeah. Maybe that's where they uh, stole that from. But Darnell is going to be the king of the takedown out here. But Frank Lapoli has 
caught up with Chip Reyes, who just had that big pin. And let's see if we can go over to Frank now. Okay, Chip, big move. I was calling you Chip off the old block Reyes. You scored your John Smith single, then you went right to your signature move. You got that tilt. Is that what you were looking for? It's all the way. Because uh, my team needed six. And I tried to do the best I could to help out the team and everything, you know. Well, you look good. Uh, Jimmy, you'll probably see Jimmy again. He's a tough competitor. Yeah, but is. you got your move. You figure forward and you put your team. That was a big six points for Salem High School. Yes, sir. I just wanted to get all the team fired up. Give a good uh, opening for Jimmy, you know. Well, good luck. Congratulations. Big win for Chip off the O-Block Reyes. Thanks, sir. And already, Sean Darnell will do just what we thought he would do and get the takedown. The two-point lead for Sean Darnell. 129 to go first period. Darnell going against Blankenfloor, and again, here's two ranked wrestlers. At 18 and two, John Blankenfloor is ranked second in Tidewater, going against, of course, the number one ranked and 24 and 0, Sean Darnell, defending state champion. It, 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 you've got the Darnell, you got number one against number two, and again, a number one of these crazy situations. If uh, if if Darnell just wins by decision, that's a plus for Salem. Right. So I mean, this is the this is where Salem has to try to gain as many points as they can to make a match of this with Great Bridge, and uh, uh, and also not give up as many points as when they are in when they are going when, you know when they're, when they're not in a, a winning situation, and this is one of their dominant wrestlers here losing two to nothing. Uh, state champ Darnell is going to try to have to take it to him. Darnell on top two to nothing after an uh, early takedown. Right. Dar Darnell also cautioned. Cautioned already. Down yeah. to 55 seconds to go. Started now. a little before the whistle. Oh, we're, we're on the whistle. Okay, yeah. fine. We got some great matches. That's the fine. first six matches uh, will really set the tone of this. However, it's something that we usually see is Sean Darnell just take his opponents down at will, and he's not able to do that. We're down to 41 seconds to go now. First period, two-point lead for Sean Darnell. The last time they wrestled, the score was 4-2, to two, but it was a very physical match with uh, Darnell just, uh, just beating up, basically, uh, uh, Blankenford and, uh, and just crumbling under the pressure. Blank of four now in an unenviable position. Very unenviable. But he's moving well. And uh, again, getting uh, through the first period, uh, it's just 2 nothing. Uh. The Wildcats would like to get the six points here. After <laughs> losing with a uh, pin at 103, the Wildcats down 6 to nothing. Of course, as Frank mentioned in the pregame, Salem is the team that scored the most points against the Wildcats this year. They scored 24 points earlier in the season. And the wrestlers will go out of bounds with five seconds on the clock in this first period at 112. Boy, was that a great move, a standing Granby and a standing Granby counter. So they were both flip-flopping in that direction. Uh, in our interview with Reyes, you say, heard him say he was going after the tilt right from the get-go. End of the first period, two to nothing. Sean Darnell on top of blank and floor of Salem, the Sun Devils in here in the region finals both of these teams will advance though in the state tournament which will be next weekend at great bridge i uh get your tickets early mr is that Pat. confirmed that it is at great bridge well they have to well, win they tonight. have to win if they win tonight it'll be at great bridge if salem wins it'll be at salem okay well hopefully it'll be at great hopefully bridge. Let's be i wasn't right. sure that the great is great bridge available for that yes yes okay. they're not available for the semifinals. uh actually they're not available for the first night because there's a basketball game there That'll have to be wrestled at Indian River if they win. Okay. But and what'll happen? It'll be Indian River on Friday night, and then Saturday the semis and the finals will be at Great Bridge. That's smart because Great Bridge uh, would want to have it in their home gym. Oh no doubt. No doubt. But Indian River's close enough. That's, that's true. But you know where your own locker is, then, you know. Right. You yeah. That's true. Yeah, that's How true. much an advantage Frank does a home court advantage Big. That for a wrestler? It just it, it settles the nerves a little bit. Not that you have to settle Great Bridge's nerves any. I mean. A great bridge has been so impressive this year. Our hats off to Coach Martin and the super job that he's done. You know, I think I'm not, that they are darn close to scoring as many, if not more, points as a team in dual meets than they did with last year's super team. Wow! And they've done it, and they've done it with just straight balance. There's a reversal, There's ball a reversal Darnell. for Darnell. That'll make it four to zero in his favor with a minute nine to go in the second period. The wrestlers go out of bounds and will return to the center of the mat. Not the high scoring match that we usually see from Darnell, but he does have the takedown and the reversal. 
here in the second period. Down to a minute six now to go in the second period. Blanca Floor is a ranked wrestler. Right. Coming in 18 and 2. He's second ranked. Uh, he's right behind Darnell. So this, on paper, at least, these guys fairly evenly matched. You didn't expect Darnell to come in and, and uh, dominate, but he does have a 4 nothing lead just under a minute to go. Let's ask Frank. Frank, uh, Great Bridge had an easy time with Kellum today earlier in the afternoon. Finished up about, let's say, about uh, 3.30 or 4 o'clock. Now it's 7 o'clock here tonight, but Salem had a tougher time against Western Branch. Is that going to have any effect on this match tonight? Well, it can go both ways. Salem has been hot and cold all season, and right now they're, they're wrestling hot. And uh, that could have just kind of like warmed up the, 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 the fire uh, they're going to, I don't think it makes much match. They know how important this match is with Great Bridge. They're just going to need super performances like with Reyes. I mean, Reyes had to wrestle a level above tonight, and he did. did that, uh, was that a stalling warning against Great Bridge? I don't against Darnell? I, don't I think, think it so. was. Okay. And we have a stall warning against Darnell. Down to 31 seconds to go now. Second period. And really, Darnell's toughest competition perhaps in the state out here now with Blankenfor. Frank, Definitely, with, without a doubt, the only competition he's seen in the region this year. They, he's yeah, just he's strolled tough. over everybody. He's, they're Darnell. both about the, look about the same size. They're both 112 pounders. Frank, I don't believe I've seen this official before. This is uh, Virgil King from the Peninsula District and Gary Beetson, the number one official on the southeastern uh, for the southeastern district. I have seen Gary before. The other guy I haven't seen. And I think it's in any eastern region final, Rich. You will get an official from both sides of the water. And we're down now to the end of the second period. And the score, Sean Darnell, four, blanket four, nothing, going into the last two minutes. Darnell, we'll see if he'll, you think he'll cut him loose here, Frank? I don't know. I mean, this is... Uh, I mean, if he cuts him loose, I mean, Blankenford's not sound like any other, just any average wrestler. This guy's uh, tough. He placed in the state last year. Yeah. And uh, I think he's going to keep him tight. I mean, uh, Darnell's savvy enough wrestler to uh, to know if he's getting in trouble. He's not going to get reversed. He doesn't want to let Blankenford get his leg, and indeed he doesn't. He's going to try to get that Still arm Still no points awarded as of yet. Uh, Darnell started on top, so he's going to have to really get Blankenford He's riding him like a horse. I tell you that, Darnell is riding him like a horse. Darnell started on top, so he'll have to get Blankenford on his back to get any points here. I don't think that's going to happen right now. Out of bounds with 124 to go. The Darnell nice. with a four-point lead. And he said, uh, Darnell is just looking like flypaper right now. Just sticking to him like glue. Crowd behind Sean Darnell, a filled up on one side. A pretty decent crowd is filtered in here at Lake Carroll for the Again, uh, an upset would be uh, devastating here for uh, for Great Bridge. Uh, Darnell looks like he's in total control. He's wrestling a very tactical match. He, you're right, he's not cutting him loose and, and throwing caution to the wind. He's not giving Blankenford any room to do anything. Well, usually on our on our score sheets, Frank, there's not enough room for all the takedowns that Darnell will put out. I mean, he could usually puts it. It's easy for him to get 10 or 11 takedowns a match very easily. Yeah, yeah. We I did mean, it in the car on the way over here. My son, Derek, who uh, I'm proud to say just won the, the city championship at 112. We were matching up, and he, he liked Darnell. He goes, uh, he went down with Darnell and Reyes. And Here's some points. So Blackboard right trying to money. reverse. If he can get Darnell's arm off his leg, it's, he may get those points, 55 seconds to go. What's more importantly, Blankenford is in position to score right. more than just one point, but again, this is, uh, you're just not going to catch. Blankenford, <laughs> right to go and says, oh, I think I'm getting out of here. 41 seconds to go now, third period. He will get an escape point. He does get the escape here in the third, his first point. Again, uh, the last time these two wrestlers met, it was a low-scoring match, so this is not a surprise. But it's only 4-1. to one. Blank and four will catch his breath. And Coach Martin's shoot. pointing to uh, his ankle. We'll see if uh, Darnell shoots a low single and uh, tries a shot or just going to see what happens here. Now, he does do it. He does that outside sweep. And he scores the it. Takedown. That'll make it 6-1. 26 seconds to wrestle. Now they're going after the eight-pointer is what they're going to do. 
He lets him up. Blanca Floor will get the escape point. It's 6-2. And he has 15 seconds, Darnell does, to get those two points. 10 seconds. Darnell just Five, used a great poison here. Two, one, six, two is how this 112 match will end. Sean down to Darnell over Blanca Floor of Salem. Just like the first match, tough, physical, Tough guys, look for Blankenford. He is back in the regional and state uh, to place again and uh, could be against Darnell in the finals of both. Here we are to see Carl Perry. We saw him last weekend at Western Branch beat the pit bull. Well, and he's looking on fire. Watch his best move is, is will be to Perry's right. His, his sweep to his right, he's just been devastating with it. Took the pit bull down three times with it. But Tan beats him to the gun, and he shoots the sweep to the right. Ed Tan is third, uh, is ranked third in the area, 17 and three. Carl Perry ranked first, 19 and three. So both of these guys ranked. Perry first and Tan ranked third. Perry just a sophomore. Ed Tan a senior for the Salem Sun Devils. And Tan just to recently beat R.J. from Green Run, who was a very high, highly regarded ninth grader, beat him rather handily. R.J. Davis. There's that sweep, and uh, Perry's got that length and just chops it right back. Two takedown points for Perry, the first thus far with a minute 12 to go. They're out of bounds, and we're just in the first period. Perry's going to let him go. There's the escape point to make it 2-1. Perry over Tan. One minute, the first period halfway over. Call Perry up 2-1. Perry 19-3. and three, um, had kind of a rough beginning of the season and then uh, had a loss or two at the end and then came back strong last week as he got toward these important matches at the end of the season. Now watch him run the pipe. Perry is just hot on his feet. He is just dominating on his feet. And there's another sweep. Opposite side. He's just going. He's just alternating sides. He gave, right Tan, the left. He gave Tan the escape point to make it 4-2 and now he's looking for another takedown. Perry with a front headlock. He's in a real 10. good position with our front headlock, with our, with our front headlock cam. <laughs> I think that's what that's called, a front headlock. There's a team score, 6-3. to three. Salem on top after the pin at 103. Another two. one. Just there's two, picture perfect two. Two takedown points for Perry right at the end of the first period, right at the buzzer just about, and that'll make it 6-2 at the end of the first period. Three takedowns for for Dink. And the escapes for Ed Tan. Pretty easy name there for you. Yeah, I would say. I was gonna make some comment about his black uniform and call him black on tan. That's but. a reference to uh, Black and Tan. Well, there's, there's another, another one. takedown by Perry. So Perry is in search of the major decision. Looks like Perry's going for the sunburn instead of the tan. Yeah, right? no doubt. Eight to three. That was bad, but it needed to be said. Needed. I, I needed to hear it. Trying to kick tan out there. <laughs> <laughs> and he's doing oh. it right now, yeah. Frank. Yeah. He's just beating, Perry is just beating Tan to the punch every way, everywhere he turns. Wrestlers go out of bounds. Over toward our man, Tim Martin. Right, they almost had the in-the-face cam shot there. That's right. And you see, Tam is just short on his shots. That was a, it's not even close. Perry's got a cradle. 
and, it, and he's got it tight. Now see if he can finish this off right. He's lifting, keeping his head. There he goes. Got it torqued. Plenty of time. He's up 10-3 anyway. Lots of time left on the clock. A One whole minute. On the clock. And let's see if Perry can convert. His head has popped out. Now it's back where it's supposed to be. He's going to have to drive him and just barbell lift up. Tan reaching for Perry's leg as Perry gets closer to on top of him. Some back points now for Perry with 36 seconds to go in the second. He scores his two there. That makes it 12. That'll make it 12 to 3. He got it. Yeah. it. And that's it. That's a 10 for Carl Perry. That's a big one. Add six points to the score. That'll make it 9 6 in favor of the Wildcats, thanks to Carl Perry and his pin of Ed Tan with 15 seconds to go in the second period. There at 119. Rich, that uh, brings up the question, will the Wildcats ever look back from this point? Well, if Perry gets the win. I mean, the Salem is strong at the lower weights, but now Great Bridge is going to throw out um, Aaron Beetson, who is ranked, and this I mean, is that's a, not going to hurt. Coach Taylor said that this is an important match here at 125. Aaron Beetson, though, is ranked second in the area. He's 20 and 2. The wrestler for Salem here at 125 is uh, Ramon Copeland. Can you say, Rich, that I have to believe that Beaton is a quiet number two rank. I mean, he's not a guy that gets all the no. headlines. Copeland was 9-2. and two. He's a sober. He was 9-2 and two coming into this tournament. So Copeland looks like he's going to go out there wide open. I mean, he has nothing to lose. And I think this is a, one of the key matches for Salem, like uh, Coach Taylor said. Because if they lose here, it's not going to look good for Salem. No. And that's stalemate call. Let's go over to Frank Lapoli, who's with uh, Carl Perry. Frank? Uh, here we are with Carl Perry, a big winner, comes up with a pin. Carl, you've been wrestling on fire. Last week you had your big win over the Pitbull, and then this will put your team right back into, takes the lead and puts you right back into it. What happened out there? You seem to be building up your momentum. Yeah, we've been uh, working hard in the room. Chris Martin's got me moving back and forth again. I had a little bit of adversity back there a couple weeks ago and finally fought out of it. So, man, he's still working hard. You were hitting your sweeps to both sides. Were they coming open to you, or was that your plan to mix it up? Um, that was just coming to me. It was open, so I used it. And on the cradle, can you uh, say what happened there? Um, he had it, uh, he had his breaking my lock there for a little bit, and when he did it, I just locked him back up with it and took him out on over. Carl Perry puts their Great Bridge right back into it, a big, a big pin at 119. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. It's one nothing right now. Aaron Beetson got one penalty point. Copeland already a little frustrated came back uh, sort of flailing his arms a little bit as they were coming back inbounds after the whistle blew. Uh, Copeland wrestling after the whistle, if you want to put it that way, and Beatson got a penalty point that way. It's one nothing, And here we see Copeland shoot in. He's pretty quick. Pretty quick, but something that may surprise some of the Wildcat fans. Aaron Beatson's just a sophomore. Hey, look at that, though. There's a Hey, Copeland's just a sophomore, Copeland. too. That's right. Copeland's just a sophomore. Here he has two takedown points on Beatson to make it 2-1 to one with 14 seconds to go in the first. I tell you, Roman Copeland has been the big story the last few weeks for Salem High School. He was a JV wrestler just a few weeks ago, had a big win against Gray, uh, Cox, beating Marable. And against Marable, and uh, and now he's he's, he's going in a big way right now with uh, with Aaron Beetson. It's tied up at two after that escape by Beetson, and I think Coach Taylor a little upset there because a the penalty point was awarded to Copeland earlier for doing what it looked like Beetson did right there, wrestling after the whistle. And that's the end of the first period. Everything tied up at two. Individually speaking, that is. Team score 9-6 right now in favor of the Wildcats. That was a big, big win at uh, a big win at uh, 119 for Great Bridge. I mean, a big win because the whole thing was uh, how many points Salem can can score, and at the same time, 
Two takedown Same points time. for keep, keep Great Bridge from getting bonus points. Four to two now. You have to wonder if Copeland comes out and he comes out in that much of a flurry, is he going to run out of gas in the third period against uh, Aaron Beetson? We'll find out. Right now, this guy's been doing everything right, Copeland. Uh, Beetson uh, is a, just a great athlete. He looked a little flat in against the Kellum, but the kid he was wrestling from Kellum was a tough, is a tough cookie and has been around. So he lost 4-2 to two against Kellum and just wasn't able to get an offense mounted. He already looks more fluid in this match. Yeah. No question. Just inside a minute to go. You know, Frank, it's amazing to me that the Wildcats win so many matches that these guys can stay motivated. Well, it, this is a young team. They don't know how not to be unmotivated. I mean, they, they're all so young. So many of them are back next year. That's bad news for everybody else. And... Uh, See what happens here. Copeland managing to stay off his back. Oh, Beetson. Look at Beetson. <laughs> Beetson says, hey, you're not getting out of Yeah, that. really. The Beats trying to stay on here. Yeah. Yeah, pretty strong for a 125 pounder, huh? Yeah, no doubt. But you know, maybe, maybe that's a credit to the Wildcat yeah. coaching staff that they can keep these guys motivated like this. Day in and day out. I mean, These they have to know. They can read the newspaper. They have to know how heavily favored they are to come in here. And I mean, uh, here's testimony. Uh, win. Copeland, just a sophomore, 9-2, and two, and he wins uh, today. So he's, his record's probably about 11-2, and two, and Beetson's a sophomore. So these are two tough sophomores, and I'm sure we'll see each other in a few years to come. There's a warning against Copeland. As the second period ends, and we head into the third, Beetson up 4-2. Boy, what would Copeland do, Richie Babb, if that unsportsmanlike point could come back to haunt him? Maybe uh, if he gets comes. an escape, makes it 4-3, to three, then if the match ends like that, he'd have to kick himself for that unsportsmanlike call early in the first period. Now, now Copeland's forte is he's good in a flurry. Oh, he just beats and caught him completely flat-footed. Completely flat-footed. Still no control, no points awarded as yet. That foot, that foot is where it's all being. Everyone, that's the control factor. And Copeland could turn this into a takedown. He has to get his hips up. It seems that all three great Beetson, Bridge coaches were all telling Beatson something different. Right, Beatson <laughs> has to get his, stay under that knee and then try to lift it. They call it stalemate. As long as he listens to those three coaches and does all three things. That's right. Or any one of those three. Yeah. Just do something. Now, again, beats and caught, caught Copeland. Watch this. Copeland's right foot. It's just hanging out there like a giant carrot. Kind of like a carrot, Frank. Right. And Beatson is trying to hop, hop to it. Almost halfway through this third there period. There it is. He's going to the right. He's going to, well, Beaton's left. <laughs> Actually, that was a takedown if he would have stayed, if he would have kept his composure and balanced out. And there's Copeland with that John Smith single that Reyes shot and scored with uh, on the Hawk Hawthorne. And he's got a bit of an angle on Beaton. Beaton trying to stalemate it out and defectively does. I need Beatson to put a little more strut in his stance here and, and circle a little bit more. Third period. Copeland seems not to be mo as mobile as he was in the first two periods, and it seems a bit flat-footed. Yeah, I think like Mickey said, maybe he's a little tired. He yeah, came I think out so, so too. Energy. He's going to walk right into a low single. Yep, and, he's a, and it's not a very good shot there. A straight double. That's not going to work on Beatson. Yeah, I think I think the gas tank has started to run out a little bit. There's the stall warning again. Fifteen Beetson. seconds left in the left in the period. Beatson cannot lose on stalling because he's got a two-point lead. Five seconds. That's it. 
And that's the end of the third period and the end of the match here at 125. Copeland falls to Beetson, or we could say Beetson beats him <laughs> at 125. Wow. And the beat passes it on to Hunter Beetson. Whose uncle is, is officiating here tonight. But that he is officiating tonight, but that doesn't mean anything. Uh, Gary is a right. top-notch professional. Right. Just a bit of trivia. That's a lot of, lot of people go. Did not know. This so. is Garcia, a uh, state place winner. Didn't he used to sing for the Grateful Dead? Make the Dead? team score now on your 12 to 6 in favor of the Wildcats. Hunter Beaton, the punt returner for the Wildcat football team this year. That's right. The thing that is so menacing about Great Bridge, and uh, they've done all year, is they have a tremendous amount of balance. I mean, they've got the great wrestlers right in there with, with Darnell. Obviously, he's their star. But they've got balance all the way up. You're not going to get an easy match. You're not going to get a walkover in any weight class against Great Bridge. And, they, and they've, they've worked hard, and they've proven it. You have to wrestle them in every single weight class this year. They have no holes in their lineup. Everyone on the team has a winning record. Kelso Garcia is the Salem wrestler. He's ranked third at 16-2. and two. Aaron Beetson ranks second. He's 20 and two. I'll make that. Uh, well, he's not ranked. Hunter Beetson is not ranked. Uh, but he is a senior. Garcia was a state place winner last year, and he was fifth in the state. So uh, you can look for Salem to try to get some big points in this, and it's up to Hunter Beetson to fed that bonus point situation out of the scenario. And if he can win, it'd be a devastating swing. I would say the match is all but over if, it, if it's won here by Hunter Beatson. Both these guys are seniors, Frank. All that much more to fight for. Right. Two takedown points for Garcia. First points to go up on the board with 35 seconds to wrestle in the first period. Frank Garcia's coming in here ranked third. Beaton's got to be top ten, easy, maybe top oh, yeah, five. Easy, easy top, maybe easy top, top five. I'd There's say, a... yeah, yeah, it's strong. He's he's one of the top uh, guys, and he's going to be right in there fighting for that regional berth. Caution on Garcia. Only four from the region go to the state, and he's definitely got a shot at being one of those four. But the thing of it is, there's a couple of real tough cookies on the peninsula. One at Hampton High School, and another one at Bethel at 130. So it's going to be pretty tough to uh, at 130 and you've got the, the Smith who was second in the state back so it's a t it's a real tough weight class down to 10 seconds in this first period Garcia of Salem up by two and that's the end of the first period Garcia, ranked number three from Salem, up to zero. As we approach the beginning of the second period. Garcia, at least on paper, favorite here. He's the ranked wrestler. Now, uh, even though he's ranked third. Now at 135, I think we also have another Salem wrestler, the one of their other last ranked wrestler against Aaron Bupre. Against Dustin, right? Mm -hmm. Dustin, Aaron a Bupre. tough cookie. They're all tough. Great Bridge has done an absolute amazing job. Recently in the newspaper, uh, Coach Martin was named one of the co-coaches of the year by the sports writers for just putting together, putting back together a solid team after graduating almost everybody. Well, I guess it's just like uh, the Dallas Cowboys, Frank. They don't uh, rebuild. They just reload and make another run at the title. Yeah, doesn't seem like a question of whether they are, it's by how much. And with Hawthorne, look at him, just a ninth grader. Yeah. And uh, I know they've got some real good kids coming up next year with the Woodhouse uh, uh, kid and a few other good ones in the junior high school program. So, And then they're all so young. So I would say that in two years that you should see another super, super duper well, I heard an unidentified fan today say, you know, this would be a really competitive tournament. 
if Great Bridge wasn't in it. Everybody else would be very competitive with each other. It would be some close matches. But with Great Bridge in here, they're going to... Well, this this year was uh, the whole the school year. Uh, there's two to nothing to score. It was close, and everybody has been close. The Beach District had uh, three teams with two losses. Right. Uh, Southeastern District, uh, with the exception of Great Bridge, had had some clo uh, some tough matches. Uh, the Eastern District, uh, Lake Taylor dominated, and uh, so it has been it has been a good year for everybody else. <laughs> And for Great Bridge. And for Great Bridge, it, it's got to be an outstanding year because they're, they're right when they want to be with a lot of youth in that lineup. 12 seconds in this second period. Only a two-point uh, game so far. Two that's okay, nine. though. And that's Again, we're back to that situation where if uh, Beeson can keep it close, it's in his favor to steal a match in the third period. No scoring at all in that second period. Remember, Garcia has to score big points to give Salem any type of edge to close the gap. And uh, Hunter Beetson is wrestling just super duper here. That's why Frank likes to say that you can win a match without right. winning the match. Exactly, exactly. I'm a str it's, it's real obvious. That's the second caution on Garcia for starting before the whistle. Yeah, uh, that's the second caution. The next one, a point will be awarded to Great Bridge. Beats it on top, and really when you're down by two points, that's not exactly where you want to be. Well, not necessarily. I mean, if he's on his feet, he might get taken down. So uh, he's keeping the score down just a two to nothing. Now, they, they may decide to cut him, but they might want to wear him down a little bit first. It's a different strategy, uh, trying to keep the match close and then steal it right. at the end. The end getting closer with every tick of the clock. Right, and, and again, uh, this 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 Garcia did place in the state last year. Hunter did not. So you got to wrestle a little different type of tactic. Very relaxed, Great Bridge sideline over there today. But I, I don't think the doubt is in it, uh, 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 in the outcome is of any doubt to the bench. It doesn't appear to be. Let's not put it that way. I mean, a little suspicious of the guy reading the TV guide. <laughs> Coach Martin with the short sleeves today. It's a little warm in the gym. That's okay. Eight time off the clock. That's all right. I mean, again, uh, Garcia is not able to mount an offensive attack. Beaton is doing a great job. And again, Frank, the score is only two to nothing, so if Beaton... Uh, like you say, in the regional tournament, right? Could, the uh, quick turn, he turns, he turns yeah. him, scores three, match ends, he wins. Like that. Whoop. No, I believe that's two reversal points right there for Garcia. That'll make it five to zero. But Gar um, a Hunter's got to fight off his back right now because Garcia will be going for it with a vengeance. Fifty-four seconds. Okay, uh, Beaton looks like he's gotten out of trouble. He's got to crawl forward. What he's trying to do is lift him, and he's out of it. He's in good shape now. He'll be coming up. He got his knee pinched. Oh, his leg. Oh, no. Nope, he's in good shape. It's a cross seconds. body ride. Hunter, tough to score on. Got that lanky kind of body frame. Hunter knows what's going on here. He knows the score. Just doesn't want to get turned here. Five this seconds. is a victory for Great Bridge, even though they lost the match. And that's at the end of the 135-pound weight match. Hunter Beatson falls to Garcia, who was a ranked wrestler coming in, 4-0. And we, as we head into 140, neither of these wrestlers... Well, actually, we're at 135 now. I was actually wrong. That last match was at 130. We're at 135 now. Aaron Beaupre from Salem over Scott Dustin. Actually, not over him, uh, but he's on the mat right now with Scott Dustin of Great Bridge. Neither of these guys are ranked. Ooh, well, this is one of those up-in-the-air matches that uh, 
what Salem's going to want, but I like Dustin in this match. I, just by their stances right now, I mean, Dustin just looks like he's bigger, and uh, he's just wrestled been really well lately. Good technique. Again, there are no gimmies in, in, the, in the Great Boots lineup, and they're looking super. This is the time of the year that they uh, rise to that next level, as Coach Martin likes to put it. Both these guys are seniors. Boucrae finished the regular season 11-4, and four, while Dustin finished the regular season at 18-6 and six for the Wildcats. 18-6 and six for Dustin and 11-4 and four for McCray. Two takedown points right there for Dustin to get things underway about halfway through the first period. And he's scoring nice, tight, There's two back points in the pocket of the official. And there he'll award those two points and make it 4-0 in favor of Scott Dustin. This is one of those matches that Coach Mike Taylor mentioned he needs to win. Oh, big time. And he's not looking good in it. 12-9 is the uh, score right now in favor of the Wildcats. That's a team score. Get up here a little bit later. You you've got the piranha getting ready to make his appearance, and you gotta like Harper. He's really matured this year as a, as a wrestler, and he's, I, I like him. I like him as a, as a, just a phenomenal athlete. I think. Do not be surprised, and I'll be make a prediction right now to see him as a two-time state champion. Wow. I don't think he's got enough savvy this year. But if he may place, and then he could put himself in a position to win two before he gets out. That wouldn't be bad. It would, be, would not surprise me in the least. But Cray here, the last ranked wrestler on Salem's lineup. So if he loses here, that's an even bigger hit to the Salem Sun Devils and their chances of doing anything here, although they're only down 12 now. And this Salem team took a big lead in this tournament uh, earlier on when they did. See if I can. Well, I can't. They they had a big lead against Gloucester. They led 27 to nothing with those early weight classes, and then uh, Gloucester cut it to 27-25 before 36-25. So you can see that the strong part of this team is in the lower weight classes. If he's ranked, he's, he's not wrestling like he's ranked. Yeah, I I mean, he's being dominated. Well, according here. to my notes here, he's ranked. Now, I could be wrong. I've been well, Let's get to be some more before. notes. Give me some notes. Give me some notes. According to the paper, he's ranked. And that would pretty much be where you get your ranking That would pretty from. much be it. Pretty much. Pretty much. Paul White does a great job. We want to commend him. Did Super you? job, I got a Paul. question. Two more points there for Dustin. will make it 6-0. I'll ask you that question in a minute. I'll be waiting. Do you know Paul White? Yes. Yeah. D does he? <laughs> did he used to teach a green run? I don't know. Okay. But it would not surprise me. Very intelligent. Young I know man. a guy that used to teach English a green run. His name was it Paul White. Fitz. He's a reporter. Yeah. English. Kind of skinny guy. Kind of skinny guy. Yeah. I bet that's him. But he said he could. But he said he could take you. Maybe that's not him. I don't know. I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, That's also, how tough Harper is. Harper, according to the Virginia pilot, is ranked number one and number three. So he could meet himself. Or Actually, he's one ranked and one two. and two. So he could in meet himself in the uh, region final. Ooh, let's hope that doesn't happen. <laughs> I wonder if he's, if it, the number one ranked guy is the weekend guy. <laughs> yeah, could be. You know, could He gets be. the better seed in the right, tournament, right. too. Like the weekend guy. You want to be the weekend guy because the tournaments are on the weekend. Ah, the weekday guy is, does the dirty work. Yeah. That's true. 28 seconds to go. Dustin up 6-0 here at 135. Paul White in his article this week in the newspaper had a, something good to say about the pit bull Chris Viola after oh, that tough, classy. tough loss right. that he had to parry. Uh, Paul White noted that uh, Viola took it with a, a lot of class, right. which he did. And he came back out to cheer on his teammates after a tough defeat, which was something that had to be tough to do for Viola, the most competitive guy you're going to meet. Okay. But a lot of class shown by Viola and a lot of class for White to put that in the uh, article. Right, and, uh, and right, and very much was so. And uh, 
it's nice to be that the neat things are noticed and written about and, and that's definitely noteworthy Dustin starting to get, to get uh, Bucre on his back only two seconds to go though not going to be able to do I it tell you what, <laughs> Dustin, do it. Dustin's making this look easy Yeah. and uh, number two right up on your scoreboard that means he is the ranked wrestler number two against the unranked I mean uh, if Dustin's not ranked. Let's uh, go ahead and say that he's in his rank. That's eight ranked wrestlers in the Great Bridge lineup. I mean, Let's it's go and phenomenal. Say Let's go ahead and say he Let's is. make our own ranking. He's he's ranked. He wins, he's ranked. That's what yeah, I say. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. I'm just so impressed with this Great Bridge team. I'm going to go out on a limb and tell you that I think they've got more balance as a team than last year's team. More wow. overall balance. You know, maybe they don't have the Terminator, and they don't have uh, Eason, but overall, through the lineup, I think they're stronger at 25 maybe than they were last year. They, uh, you know, at 30, about the same, uh, 35. You know, they're, they have more overall balance right. against their competition than they than last year's team. That's a pretty bold statement, yeah, considering is. you could go... Uh, I'm a pretty bold guy. like uh, Strickland. Yeah, Kelly, but I'm Kelly. not saying this super duper. Don't right. forget the dumpster. But overall. Overall balance, and right. Perry wasn't a slouch last right. year, so that's a pretty bold statement, right? Yeah. Perry would beat himself if he wrestled himself last year. You're right. He, he would. This year's Perry would win. This, this is the new Perry. Minute like, 20 to go. Uh, two points on the board right now for Pucre. You know, Sean Darnell's girlfriend has got a loud voice. She's sitting right behind me, and she's the one that keeps yelling. Well, see if you can do something about that. Hey, I think I might have to tell her to, to uh, vacate the gym. Vacate the gym. It's about eight. It's eight to two now as Dustin gets his points, and then he'll give Beaupre the escape, so that'll make it eight three with 52 seconds. I tell you what, if this was a, if this was a fight, they'd oh, he put something going. And yeah. Maybe just maybe we can't underrate him if he can you know, eight to five. It makes it interesting here at the end. Sure does. Back points would tie it. You think Dustin might have just looked up at the scoreboard and saw I think only that a he took and that he's been dominating the match and he didn't take his best shot. But he's in, he knows what the situation is. You know, Great Bridge hasn't get up given up a set of back points this except in the except except at the 105 pound 103 pound weight class. Haven't given haven't gone to their back. Right tonight, except in one weight class, and that was only one time. <laughs> that was a lot of back points, though. <laughs> only, yeah, yeah. We pinned him. Yeah, pinned right. him with the same thing, so only went to his back once. Dustin just holding on here with about 10 seconds to wrestle in the third period. He has a, he has a three-point lead, 8-5. And speaking of Jamie Kelly, he is here in attendance today, the Old Dominion wrestler, former Wildcat. Oh, there he goes, right there. Right at Ralph. Our camera guy almost got the slam cam thrown on him. Yeah, he's famous for that. We got that. We had, that yeah, we had the slam cam. Is that it? Yeah. yeah I tell you what, he was Ralph, slammed a couple of years ago yeah. over at Oscar he, Smith. He ate it at a football game one time. And it ends Scott Dustin beating Boucre, the ranked wrestler, by a score of 8-5. to five, And we head now to 140. The new ranked wrestler. That's right. Now what do we got here? We got uh, Todd. Here we got David Todd. Now Todd is that guy. He's like he's like flypaper. He throws them legs on you, and he's so tough to get he's so tough to get away from. And uh, we have got for <laughs> Salem. I'm not Friday even try. Oh, it's Friday 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 Friday. Team score 15 to nine now. Sounds Favorite. like something at Taco Bell. Okay, Friday <laughs> He's got a great hairdo. He gets the hairdo award. Friday yeah. Ida gets the hairdo award. Frank, does that make your top ten list? You don't want to wrestle a guy with a mohawk? I don't know if it's a mohawk. That's what's so neat about it. It looks like... It's I close to a mohawk, it but it's real. It's kind of wide. Yeah, yeah but, it, but it looks soft and gentle. Well, what do you ask for when you go to get your hair cut? Look, I want a mohawk, but leave it kind of wide. Yeah, I want it kind of wide and no hair in the give back me the, whatsoever. Give, give me the, the four-lane highway look. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Wide body mohawk. There you go. Nothing on the back. Oh, you mean you want me to cut the back? No, There's nothing. There's Todd on. with a Come butt drag, and there goes the boots. That's what they call them, throwing the boots in. I can see it now. 
I want you to leave it about. I want you to leave a half inch on the top and um, nothing on the back or the sides. <laughs> oh, you don't mean to cut the back and the sides? No, I don't want you to leave anything <laughs> on the back and the sides. Minute 13 to wrestle. It's 2-0 in favor of David Todd. There's Todd with those legs. And I tell you one thing about them, they're a, they take a lot out of you, throwing those legs in. No, not at all. I don't, I well, Frank, let me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me fill you in on something. When you hear the guy talk in the headset, they can't hear him on television. You have to say... Well, wait a minute, that that's my fault. Frank. No, that wasn't me. Do you oh. think he wrestles a lot like all red? Oh, okay. Well, since you... <laughs> no. Let me give you... No. Since that was the question, you already heard the answer. <laughs> that's right. So figure it out at home. Karnak. I'm Karnak. doing wrestling with Karnak. I can do <laughs> the answer is no. I don't know how he guy does it. I, I can do some more of those. <laughs> oh, I bet you can. I know. Watch. Well, we'll be, we'll be doing that along. The new, new, new feature, we're going to say the answer before the question. And you tell us the question. <laughs> A guy's in the truck like that one. Yes. Yeah, Frank, that's the truck. Yeah. He's that's got true. it now. The little the little birdies in our ear. And we mean little. The answer is yes. The question is, <laughs> do you guys smell that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Something is going wrong I'm in the concession the stand. The table, baby. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, here 39 we go. Seconds. Back to the real stuff. 39 seconds to wrestle here. David Todd's still up by two. Still the first period. <laughs> Those little boots go back in. Those boots are made for riding. That's just what I'm going to do. One of these days I'm going to pin you with these boots. All right, okay, guys. I... Hey, it wasn't bad. Thank I thought you, it was good, hey, Frank. The guys at the table were tapping their toes. <laughs> I was liking it. Nancy, I mean... Uh, <laughs> See, he's got to use them or they'll stalemate him. they got to use them or they'll stalemate him. And he just... Use his legs, you mean? Yeah, they'll just call it a stalemate. He's flattened about. Now, if he doesn't turn them... Five seconds. It just takes so much out of you. That's the end of the first period. 2-0. David Todd on top. And he will take bottom to begin the second period. Let's see who the leading scorer is today. Well, that's something today. new for Great Boy, Scott Dustin, hey, eight who's points. who's the leading scorer? Scott Dustin has eight points. Pins don't count. Well, I, I disagree with you because um, how many uh, points Perry had a lot of points before he pinned the game. Well, let's check. Let's see if we want to give it to Perry. Perry I'm had going with six. Perry. He had six points before he but pinned. But then he pinned Before he pinned, so... But so he okay, got so more team been eight, than anybody else. So six that'll be three or ten. So it was six to three at the pin? Uh, just before the pin. Right. That makes so sense. let's give it to Dustin. He has eight. Uh, okay, eight. Okay. Okay. That's it. The most map points. Most we'll give the most team points to uh, yeah. Pair. Okay? Thank you for that clarification. Okay. You're welcome. Minute 32 to Russell in the second period. David Todd up by two, but down on the bottom. And coming out next, it will be the Piranha, won't it? Yes, Michael Harper, 145. Michael Harper. Ranked first in the area, Salem has no more ranked wrestlers to come out tonight. That's not good. No. They're down 15-9. I think they're pretty well. We're looking at this point. It's at 140, but the fat lady is moving is she, into is she the gym. Is she tuning up? Is she tuning up? She's looking for a place to sit. Two points on the reversal for David Todd. will make it 4-0 just under a minute. Nice move there by David Todd. David you know, Todd's an another guy that doesn't get a lot of credit for this Wildcat uh -oh. team. Ruh -roh. He's 14 and 9 on the year. As long as David Todd can hold that leg. He's got a good grip on it, too. He's yeah. just going to stay right there. He's not going to drive anything. 30 seconds. Anything. Still made it out. That's smart. A very smart wrestler, Todd. And the Salem fans are not really fond of that call. David Todd here up on top now and up by four points with two seconds to go in the second period. If that's the way it's going to end in the second period. That's the way it's going to end. I think, we ought to give, I think we ought to give the Salem guy a point for his hair. Thanks, so. You know, I read about our rule change, Frank, and that was just barely voted down. Best they, hairdo. They would not One allow the point. point. Allow. Best hairdo. Boy, we get some, oh! Todd almost went. Wouldn't it be funny, wouldn't it be cool for a wrestler to get his hair cut 
so it looked exactly like the head gear. Oh, yeah, didn't you? <laughs> I think my son could do that. He could get the hairdo hair. Close, cut. close. He needs about another half inch. Down I mean, I'll ask to ask him. He's here. Derek LaVoy is here at Cy, being our assistant today, the city champion of Virginia Front, Beach. City. At what weight? At uh, 112, so oh. he could wrestle Darnell. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> he gets to take on Darnell. Yeah, boy. What do you think about that? Yeah, he says he 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 says where's the exit is what oh, he says. He says he'll take it. <laughs> Said he doesn't like wrestling older guys. So well, uh, yeah. I can understand. That. That's a good one. But that doesn't explain how he can pin Frank. Really? That's something. That's something like Mickey. Yeah. It's not that Mickey doesn't like older guys. He just likes younger. There's guys. Darnell. <laughs> there's Darnell. I mean, uh, Todd trying uh, to get that little. And if he can get this, it uh, matches. Well, now it's six to zero in his favor. It's going to be an official timeout so David Todd can fix his headgear and reattach his left ear. And Derek may be reconsidering that match. See, he's doing push sit-ups over here in his chair. Well, you know, David Todd knows that he could be the leading scorer and get our leading scorer award with a couple more points. He knows that deep down. Well, Dave Great Bridge is making this look easy here in the middle weights and just uh, niching away point after point here. And it just, it's not close. So you called it, Frank. Great, uh, excuse me, Salem would have had to have won big early. Early. To do anything. Partiata gets the escape, or actually David Todd kind of gives it to him to make it 6-1 with one minute to wrestle. And now David Todd will get his two points back to make it worthwhile. Uh, I think Mike Taylor a little uh, frustrated there that, that uh, those wrestlers weren't called out of bounds. Maybe not. 8-1. to one. They're going to cut him away. Yeah, yeah. Cut him. they're going to cut him and try to get another... They want that major decision. Cut him up, make it 8-2. Rushes go out of bounds. Ten seconds under a minute to go. That makes it 50 seconds. They're going for the... they got to get two takedowns is what they got to try to do. Two takedowns at 46 seconds. Well, here they comes one it. of them. Maybe not. Nah, they're going to be out. Very workmanlike performance from David Todd out here tonight. A workmanlike performance. Not flashy. No, nope, that's how he is. He's not flashy, but he, he takes a lot of steam out of you, and he put the boots in early. And uh, now he's trying to score and get a major decision. He's going to need to score. No, two will do it. Two will be 10-2. to two. He'll get it. He needs a takedown, one takedown here. Of course, the toughest thing we have to do tonight, we have to come up with a nickname for Charles Houck, the heavyweight, who just decided he doesn't like the Houckster. Well, that's because so everybody calls him. we got to come up Houkster. with that. Uh, yeah. Everybody calls Pretty him. Soon. I like the rat, or the cadet, just got to set the VMI. The ratster. The VMI-ster. <laughs> the VMI-ster. I like that one. Too many syllables. Yeah. I like well, the rat. Let's call him V for sure. The rat. V. It's the rat. The rat. The ratster. The rat. The rat. Well, he'll wish he never asked for that. Yeah, he will that. <laughs> he'll wish he never asked for that nickname change. Really? Five he's seconds a, to go. He's a, big, he's a big rat. Up me too. Yes, he is. Now, we remember we talked to former Western Branch football player Blair Gregory, and every freshman has to go through the rat line, so Charles House will have to do that at VMI. That's right. He better get used to being called a rat, so we're starting early on him. 8-2, David Todd victorious over Friday Yada of Salem. And now here's the Piranha, ranked number one. Michael Harper is 20-2, taking on Alvin Abbott and Costello. Kind of like that. He's a senior, and his record is 1-10. 1-10. Could be a laugher with so Abbott and Costello. <laughs> So Alvin Abbott and Costello taking on Michael the Piranha Harper. He's, look at that, he's just a sleek, <laughs> boy, this yeah, is Sports Center and it's worst nightmare. Yes, it is. <laughs> Chip off the old block red. I bet, you know what, Chris Berman would wake up in a cold sweat if he could hear us. <laughs> it's his fault. Yeah, it is his fault. Yeah, it's watch, his fault. Watch the Piranha strike. You know, it whipper. just doesn't even sound like an even match. You've got the Piranha taking on Abbott and Costello. <laughs> yeah. A vicious fish taking on a comedy show from the 30s. <laughs> that's right. 18 to 9 is the score right now. The who's, team score. Who's on first? I don't know. Who is? No, I don't know. He's on second. No, what's on second? I don't know. Third base. That's right. We are at the 145-pound weight division. Michael Harper. 
the piranha for Great Bridge. Watch his, watch his setup. So pull that arm, had a nice sweep to the outside. Oh, look at this. Oh, nope. would that have been big? Michael Harper's hand is wrapped. That just was looking neat. Watch him. Harper trying for the big move. Watch him spin for a cradle here. Oh, ooh, a little. See that? Moon slide. I thought his uh, shoes slipped. It looked like he did kind of magnetize it. Of course, we haven't uh, talked, uh, had a talk with Michael Harper and asked him if he liked the nickname. You'll have to check that out. I'll check it always. out. I'm not going to ask him. We saw the evidence that he is the piranha at the Deep Creek Holiday uh, Christmas party, Frank. Or he took a There's bite a out point, of the wrestling. Uh, right there, awarded to Cas uh, Costello. That's not Costello. His last name's Castillo. He just went out. Alvin Castillo. He did. Coaches Smith and Martin up off the bench. The dapper Chris Smith with the Dallas Cowboy tie. Did the on one today. point went to red, so that was for Salem. Right. And if that was an illegal point, are you guys ready for this? If he doesn't get up, they win by six points. Yeah. Abbott and Castillo. He's shaking, saying that he's ready. Now I'm sure that if he's ready to wrestle, they're going to put him on. Oh, so his coach is saying, "Are you sure? Are you sure? <laughs> are you sure?" Well, that's the trainers. That's the coaches that right. into it. But if he's ready, Mike Taylor is going to send him back out there. Now, this is the way the rule goes. You get hurt, you're on recovery time. And you're recovering from, oh, you know, injury time. You're recovering from an injury from Harper. He gets hurt again, even if it's the same move. It's now it's recovery time. He can no longer win by default. But oh, that's no. old news because here we go. There's that sweep. Good quickness by Harper. He's as smooth as a cat. He just needs to learn more wrestling. Head up, good positioning, back straight, lift. He's trying to lift, and there's a turn. There's a takedown as well. Got to make it two to one in Michael Harper's favor. He has 26 seconds. I think Harper has a brother wrestles in a junior high, right? I think so. Watch out for him. Watch out for a little brother. I've never even seen him, but watch out for him. He's just going to try to. Rolling him through, trying to tilt him. Well, he only has seven seconds now. Trying to drive him over the long way. Well, he will get two back points out of that. That'll make it four to one. Michael Harper with two back points right at the buzzer over Alvin Castillo. Four to one. Hey, yeah, bad. Sorry. Needed to be said. Hey, well, somebody had to do it. Harper, I'm surprised Harper did not cut him. Now they're going to tell him to cut him. Now, whose hand, was it, his hands weren't locked the whole time, were they? No, oh, no that's right. You said he's got to give him time to... Right, that's right. right, exactly. That's right. They're, now, they're going to ride him. They're going to ride him for a little bit. Try to slap a cradle on him. If he wins this match, I'll try to get a word with the Piranha. Yeah, Ask me about the nickname. I, I, where's that stick at? <laughs> I want to take a stick with me. Talk at him. That long mic, you know, when it's really yeah, long. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. the shotgun mic. Uh, yeah. Take your son with you, Frank. He'll protect yeah, you. Yeah, take Derek with me to protect me. And he's just tough. Again, this is like... Harper just looks like he's just loaded with so much power and speed. I'm, I'm again, I'm surprised that Dernis not playing takedowns here. Four to two, he just, but he's trying to get a Ouch. pancake. He's just gonna pull it. Try to pancake him. There's an escape point for Castillo. I'm make it four <laughs> Does three. he play football? Does this Harper guy play football? I don't. Uh, he wasn't a starter for the Wildcats. He looked like he would be that. a good football player too. Yeah. Good motion. Hey, Watch him pull, pull, and sweep. Watch it. He, there it is. Speaking of, of football players, did you hear about the study uh, that um, said um, they, they studied all these linemen and the extra body weight made them, made them a much higher risk of having a heart attack? Boy, that's new news, huh? You're fat, you have a heart attack. Boy, there's a shot. Right, there, there's, there's Costello with a, with a, a shot that... Less than desirable. He should have put a held a sign up and said, "Here I come." Six to four. Michael Harper, the piranha, up over Castillo. 
29 seconds to wrestle in the second period. We're at 145. He's trying to, there's Harper with an ankle pick. He needs to just open up a little more, uh, Harper does. He's got so much more speed than his opponent. You know, I was getting ready to say, Castillo not the quickest wrestler I've ever seen. I know, and he's keeping Castillo in the match just by not opening up. Yeah. Now here he's going to lean and try that sweep, or he'll sweep to the right. There's that quickness. Takedown points for Harper now. Makes it 8-4. And this uh, second period just about over. What I tell you. Harper, four points in the first and second periods. So Coach Martin was hauling instructions. He wants to take him to his back. So the Great Bridge is relentless at just getting all the points all the time. Harper gets the every, escape in every point. position. Now it's nine four. Now if Castillo's having such a such trouble with Harper, why does he let him go? Because one well, well, to get again. takedown. So he can get a takedown. I didn't think he could do that. And then again, <laughs> now it's like he nine, heard him. Nine six favor of Harper. Castillo is surprisingly showing a little strength there. Well, not too surprising, huh? except that he's 1-10. in 10. Well, I tell you what, if this 1-10 in 10 kid is having a heck of a match right here. He sure is. He, I think he got hurt. I think Harper got hurt. May have re-injured the hand that he has taped. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Some rubber gloves over here. I don't think there'll be any need for that. <laughs> Team score is uh, 18 to 9. Salem got the got the big win there at 103, but it's been all wildcat. Well, basically, I got my son Derek Lapoli. Uh, guys, I got my son Derek Lapoli in the booth with us. I'm gonna have Derek. Have you seen any surprises tonight that you didn't expect? The crowd. What about the match? The guy's wrestling out there. He's going the way you thought? Pretty much. Uh, okay. <laughs> he went to the Chris Viola School of Interviewing. Yeah. Uh, like the, that's good. He liked that. Okay, well, Derek will come right back to you, and you sit on those thoughts for a while. <laughs> One more point for Harper as he escapes, making 10-6. Oh. Hey, no, sir. This is like a 10-round heavyweight bout. He gave him another point. He gave him a point for that. Yeah, they sure... Well, Harper got an escape. Yeah, Harper got... Well, it's 10-6. Yeah, the score hasn't changed for Castillo. So it was just an incidental headbutt. Yeah. Accidental headbutt. And then... Whoops. <laughs> Bang. Well, sorry. Sorry. Yeah, that happens a lot at my house. Hey, hold that head still. Yeah, I'm sure it does. Hey, hold that head still. We could, we could... That'd be a great nickname. The Headbutster. The Headbutster. Headbutster. So it would be. Yeah, well, we, we have to illegal. find somebody to, to give that to. Yeah, that's right. They're just attacking, and there's that pulling that arm. Harper seems to be a, have picked up the pace a tad. Better than the butt headster. <laughs> yeah, the butt headster. Yeah, I like that. One minute to go. Wow. Or the headbutster. Or the butster head. See how many takedowns Harper has. One, two, three. Or just three. Two escapes. That'll make it ten. That'll give you ten points every time. Every time. I'm pretty amazed that I could come up with that stat. That I'm quick. impressed. I'm impressed. That was a kind of a cross, crossed up move there. 42 seconds to go. Costello has to get a takedown and back points to pull it out here, but he's gonna make things happen. There's a little sweep. This will pretty well, uh, this will put up Great Bridge if they win here 21 to nine with uh, the best lying ahead for Great Bridge, really. Harper with two more points over Castillo to make it 12-6. And uh, Harper apparently has locked hands, or had locked hands for a period of time. And that'll be two points. 
awarded to Castillo. That'll make it 12-8. Huh? 12-8? I mean, of course, not enough time for anything dramatic. They're going to cut him loose and look at it. Nine seconds, yeah. So it'll be 12-9 it'll be, uh, here in a moment. And that moment has expired. 12-9. After the escape by Castillo, four seconds to one. See ya. That's the end of the 145 match. Michael Harper wins 12-9 but not really by the margin that we would have expected coming in. No, I think that uh, you, that, that, Har that Harper probably is, has a bit of an injury here. Yeah, I think you're right. Castillo held his own, considering he's 1-10, in 10, he held his own pretty well. well the I'm score. off to talk to the Piranha. All so. right, good luck. 21-9, to nine. Wildcats on top. Frank Smith out we're, there now. We're 152. That. Frank Smith ranked second, 14-2, taking on Anthony Fradiata. The brother of uh, the other Friday out. <laughs> and you would like to know that his first name was Carl. Carl. But this is not Carl. And this is Anthony. We don't know that they're brothers. No, we don't. But we'll go out on the rim. Yeah, I will. Because that phone book's just full of Friday out. Tough match going on so far. Minute 37. Two takedown points for Frank Smith. Now, somebody's getting an ovation from the crowd, and when Frank walked by, he thought it was him. Yeah. He waved to the crowd. Some back points being racked up here by Frank Smith as he's able to arm bar and roll Fradiata. He's going to go for the pin here, and indeed he gets it. Radiata on the mat, not too long. In fact, exactly one minute to go in the first period. Frank Smith rushes for a minute and then pins Radiata and acts like it's another day. Well, it was a short day. Yes, it was. Boy, Frank Smith, uh, why did he even bother to take off the warm-ups to make it now 27 to 9? That's all she wrote. Let me tell you, he just came out there and... Uh, Frank Smith was ranked second in the area. Is Billy Allred ranked? Yeah. He's ranked first at 160. He's 21 and 2. That's not too bad. He's taking on Jeff Walk. Wallach. Sorry. Is that EK or CK? That's an E. Ah. But if you don't trust me, take those statistics. That okay. You're I, believe you. I believe you. I just wanted to see something. No, I didn't think so. Walk. That's a C. Well, that's a C. Jeff Walk. That's what I thought it was. Minute and a half, no score. Billy Allred ranked first at 160 for Great Bridge, taking on Jeff Walk of Salem. What's his record? And their records, by the way. Oh, Walk is a junior, and he's 8-10. and 10. And Allred is 20-2. and two. He may be 21 and 2 now. He may be. Uh, his regular season record would be 20 and 2. Well, he's he's won a lot more than he's lost. Let's put it that way. At least 10 times more. You know, Great Bridge could get a pin here. Could happen. Could happen. And they're just going to roll on through here now. 27 to 9. 160. Billy Allred wrestling much better than he wrestled last year. Not that he had a bad season, but uh, having a really good season. Good season this time. Really? <laughs> well, and you know, he's only a junior. Wow. He could have a Mark Strickland-like year next year. He could. Of course, people who... 18 seconds, finally Allred gets his two takedown points to make it 2-0. People who aren't familiar with Mark Strickland, he was probably the most dominating wrestler in the area since Jody Staler, who is now at the University, uh, excuse me, at ODU. Uh, Old Dominion, transferred from the University of North Carolina. Two seconds, and we'll be going to Frank Lapoli pretty soon, who's with Frank Smith and the Piranha Michael Harper. Frank? Well, there's once Frank forgot to turn his mic off. That's the first time anybody's ever seen no words come out of Frank's mouth. I'm calling you. Okay. Uh, it's still not great to me because my friends and all were calling me that. 
Are you still at? Go there. Minute 52 to wrestle here. We'll be talking to Frank Moore in a minute. Billy Allred up by two. Here we go Next with uh, Mike Darnell. Michael. And Michael Harper, excuse me, Michael Harper, Frank Smith. Uh, Michael, we're calling you Piranha all year. How's that fit with you? And the reason we've been calling you that because you're always on the pry out there. Yeah, it feel, feels great with me because during my junior high season, I did, did the same thing, like fighting, get, fighting to get my moves and all. So now in school, everybody's starting to call me Piranha and stuff that, after they saw the match. That's great. You had a little problem with your shoulder, but you, you yeah. picked the pace, the pace up late in the match. Yes, sir. It feels... It feels sore a little right now, so I'm gonna go home and work on it so I'll get it back in shape for the rest of the year. Uh, Michael Harper will be hearing a lot from the prawn as time goes on. Right here, Frank Smith, hey, big pin right there. Pretty well iced the match for you guys. It looks like it's pretty well over with. Well, we knew we needed it going out there, and uh, Coach just told me to get out there and get physical and try to try to get a pin as quick as we could. And I hadn't wrestled him before. Mike had wrestled him and said he was, he was pretty tough, but I knew I could handle him. If I got a takedown on him, I could turn him. And he just looked into my half, and, I, and that's how I got it out. Frank Smith comes with a big pin, and the fat lady is moving up the stands. Back to you guys. Thanks, Frank. 37 seconds. Flurry of activity here. Billy Allred has been letting Friday has uh, been letting walk up and pinning him, letting him up and pinning him, so that the score right now is 12-5. That quickly, just in the time Frank was having his interview over there, all of a sudden it's 12-6 in favor of Billy Allred. 18 seconds to wrestle in the second period. And Allred having no problem at all. Well. Wrestlers are out of bounds, even though already able to get it to his advantage. Down to five seconds now. See our good friend Townie Townsend here running the show here at Lake Taylor. Special message uh, for Townie. Hello. Townie lives in Great Bridge. Yes. Close to the high school, as a matter of fact. Is that right? Want to give the address out? No, no. <laughs> I don't think that'll be necessary. 12 to 6 in the third period. And Two the third period left. just getting underway. Billy Allred, John uh, Walk. <laughs> John. Hey, get yeah. out of excitement, guys. Uh, yeah. And the piranha. Everybody likes a nickname. Right? Let me tell you that about that. I, while we were waiting for the interview, see this hole in my jacket? <laughs> he Look did, at that. He did that. He did that. Wow. Because kind of nibbled right away at it. Wow. 12-6. Minute and a half left. Billy Allred gets his head out and will be awarded two reversal points as a result of that to make it 14-6. Well, I think this is pretty well uh, a, a fun this match is over with. It's tough to believe. I think the score is wrong on us. Yeah, we got 27 to 9 is the team score here, and it's only going to get bigger for Great Bridge at this point. Only three more matches left, and we still have to come up with a nickname for the Charles Hauk. The rat. I thought. I thought the rat. Right. I'm sorry. This nickname thing is getting, you know. Uh, it's getting to be a job, Frank. Right? It's a business. You know? <laughs> it's a business. <laughs> you know, it's a business. We have 900 number nicknames. Call. Oh us. yeah. We'll That's name. Give us. Call us and and we'll we'll tell you something about yourself <laughs> that you don't know. That That's you don't true. know. The psychic hotline. <laughs> 26 seconds. Billy already racking up a few back points here. Probably be 17 six before you know it. Nope. Make, make that, that 16. 16. Throwing that reinforced half in. It's just this is just a tough thing. And he's gonna get he's gonna fly with this. He blocked the shoulder. He blocked the shoulder there. Two, one, that's the end of the match. See if you got any no, no time for enough back points there, so that'll make it 16-6 at the end of the 160 pound weight division match. And here we go to 171. Well, I Josh Fannin. I think now we can say that Billy Allred is going to get that Michael Great Jordan Bridge does come up 16 with a, points. Great Bridge does come up with a four-point bonus, a major decision. Phantom was... 31-9. surprised they put Phantom out of here. Really? 
I thought he was injured. Fannin will be taking on um, Kevin Villaluz. Could be Villaluz. I think it's Villa, as in Pancho Villa. Yeah, Phantom just a junior, so again, a part of this super team that you'll see with Great Bridge coming up with in the next couple of years. 18 and 5 in the regular season. Josh Fan attempting to get his leg in there, unable to do so. Six and four is uh, Villa loses record. Most of the crowd still on hand. Principal Bob Robinson. Oh, he sure is. I didn't see him earlier. Here's the interesting number of the 13 starters in the lineup. All 13 have over 10 wins. Wow. Two takedown points for Finn, and it'll be the first of this 171-pound match. Skate point now for Villa Lose. Two to one. Finn is going to play the takedown game for a while, I guess. A game that he can win, too. And all 13 have over 14 wins. Wow. Do I hear 15? Oh, it's going up and up. Oh, I'll tell you that in a second. Okay, thanks. Frank has the calculator out. The up to the minute statistics. 30 seconds. Nine have 15 or more. Wow. That's pretty darn impressive. What's a high score? Oh, nice pancake. It's the, it's the it. Uh oh, the 19 seconds to go, and there's a pin with 19 seconds the to go in the first period. Josh Fannin makes quick work of Villa at 171, and you're right, Frank, the score just keeps rolling. It's going to be 37 to 9. That didn't take long. No. Here, here's Joey Goose. He's got a little bit of that dumpster in him, and he sure does. all before him, he likes that, he's, and he's one of the marchers, you know, he's one of the yeah. pacers. He's got a rut over on the side of the mat. All right, Frank, let me look at this great bridge now, okay? What, uh, let's see now. Okay, Darnell won 24 matches in a regular season this year, okay? It's the most you ever won and when you are in the house. 24. You won 24. But 24 that was the o? whole year. You were 24 and 0? 24 and 1. Joey Goose. something I didn't know. I didn't know that, did you? Taking on Darmod, Darmod Schultz. At 189. No. One, yes, 189. Sergeant oh, Schultz. This is the number one get kid in, in, this, in the... It, this is the number one guy? No. Let's see. Is yeah. Goose number one? Goose is not... You mean ranked? No, Goose isn't ranked. And neither of these wrestlers are ranked. That's Tony Hall's number one. At 189. From Western Branch. Joey Goose goes out of bounds. Darmod Sergeant Schultz. Say, no, I think what they're saying is, is that the Salem wrestler beat the number one guy. Well, oh, he did today. Uh, Hall had right, to go for right. the pin so Western Branch could, could score points to and go for the, the win. he lost. And he lost. In the Titan Classic earlier, I believe these two guys met, didn't they, Mickey? I think they did. And I'm, I think that uh, Schultz won by pin. Oh, did he? So, who do you think is going to win now? I don't know. I just hope it's a good one. And the answer is? <laughs> Inside a minute, no points scored yet. Both these guys have the same, right, the same they, build. Yeah, they do. Do they want us to make a prediction? Same haircut, too. Make a prediction. They, they want a prediction from the truck, Frank, on this particular match. What do you, what do you see? Somebody's going to get pinned. Oh. Bold. Somebody will get pinned. How about that? That's pretty good. Warm the truck up. <laughs> the match is almost over. Well, 37 to 9. Yeah. And the Ratster, 
is coming up next. Oh, my. And there's Schultz with two takedown points on Booth. Getting some back points now and has him on his back. 20 seconds to wrestle. Frank, Let's see what Schultz can do. Gonna have trouble because he doesn't have Goose legs. Only three seconds now left. No, oh, oh, he only got it. one second. He pins Goose. Give that victory to Schultz. That's gonna make the score 37 to 15 in favor of Great Bridge. It made it make a difference in the overall. Goose visibly upset. And there goes. I think we're gonna have a team point awarded to Salem for that. Okay, an unsportsmanlike, you're right, an unsportsmanlike penalty point will be awarded to Salem. So now that's going to make it 37-16. Well, I don't know. Did they hit him with that? They well, Yeah, he just walked it. up right here. But they he didn't talk about it. He didn't report it to the head table. They didn't report it to the head table, so. The score is still 37. Well, he said he walked up and said he wanted it. I guess they decided not to, not to give it. I don't know. It's but the rat's it's out on the floor right there. Was there any change in score then? One team point. That's Lost official for Ray Bowser. Lost a team point. Lost cost, a team that point. did cost him a team point. I have to tell you something about Ray Bowser. Okay. Remember in the Great Bridge match when Purdue did not send the guy out on the back? Right, right. And we had it. He said he had five minutes. Well, Ray called me up the next day at my house and said he blew that call. Oh, really? It turned out that in a dual meet, you have to, re it's in a tournament, you have five minutes to oh. report. You know, like, you know, John Smith reports in the match. Right. In a dual meet, it's you have until the, the ref turns to you and say, report. Oh. Report right now. Oh. And if they say, we ain't got a guy, they go, he's in the stands. They go, ah, uh -huh. you report right this second. So it was a misapplication of the rules. He got confused with the tournament. So he called me up. Well, so did everybody else. So did they. We, you know, but it was it was The effect uh, was the same. Right. I mean, they yeah, ended yeah. up forfeiting the match anyway. If, but just for the, right. you know, what was going right. on, right. just so now that we know, so if you've still got on your television that those crayon marks for number seven, uh, correct it. You have to, that was wrong. You have right. to report immediately. Right. So, well, no score right now. Charles Hout the Rat. I like him. I do too. Taking on uh, Eric Ramsey. I, 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 now let me tell you this too. Let me tell you what the rat told me before the match. The I, he, rat I, he's said, beginning to look like a big rat. He said, "Look, he said I have lost on all these Saturdays." He said, "I lost to Western Branch." He said, three Saturdays in a row I've lost." He lost to Weiss earlier from right, Callum. Right. He says, "I'm taking out frustration in this match." Nice high crotch by him, the big man, the big rat. Oh, the that was rat. that was a that was a nice move by the big guy. Charles Howe the rat. It's two to one in his favor. And he said he's looking to win and win big. He wants to take out some frustration. He seems to be in a little better shape than Ramsey. Out coming off the football season. Oh, he didn't get a break. That was Ralph Cam there. Almost got taken yeah. out again. He's not afraid. No, he, he points him back afraid. in the ring there. Hey, get in there. He might jump in there. You I think Ralph him. has plans. Twenty seconds. How can Ramsey? This time next year, Charles Hack will be a rat. There is a warning, a stall warning against Ramsey of Salem. Hack looking for a win. We call him the rat. Some people say he looks like some other animals, gorillas, but uh, <laughs> it doesn't fit. <laughs> the score. The Great Bridge again dominates. And it, looking at the score, the score is 36 to 15. The last time these two wrestled, these two teams came together. Oh, Salem scored 24 points, so they have not been able to duplicate it, uh, their prior performance. Wasn't it 36 before they took away the team point? No, it was 37. Was it 37? 37? Okay. But okay. I'm looking at the Salem and, and commenting on the that their lack of productivity here in the regional finals. Right. Well, Great Ridge is a team that may not have reached their peak yet. 
I think that they're right on the road. I, I actually think they look sharper than they Charles did. Charles Howe, two reversal points here over Ramsey. Than they did. Remember last year in the state duels, they, they went in kind of limping, you know, and right. uh, they, now they've changed the state duels to before the state right. tournament rather than after the state tournament, and it's obviously a much, much better scenario for the Great Bridge team. I'm trying to see if Charles Howe mom is yeah, actually she, facing the I don't match, know. She, watching. Did, she, does, she doesn't like to watch him wrestle. No, Frank. she's only been here a few times. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Great Bridge has maybe seven regional finals. You know, it's scary how much Charles Howard looks like his dad. I don't know what to say. Uh, I think she is, she is actually... Is she watching? She's, I can't tell. Is she even up? She is up there. Remember uh, Ms. Donano? She had Donano to leave. Talked. She would leave. She would. She said, I saw her the other day, she broke two rosaries praying about her son wrestling. You know, he went through a spell where he didn't win a TV match for quite a while. I think that's probably when she broke the rosary. A minute five to go here in the second period. Charles House, the rat up by two. Been a rather uh, great bridge is made kind of we started at 7.30 and uh, 7 o'clock, so they've kind of made short work of, uh, of Salem. Right. Right? Two falls. And we want to congratulate the Salem team for an outstanding year and placing second in the regionals. I wouldn't be surprised if they won a match or two and even got for a rematch because it is that very tough. There are some tough cookies out there for Centerville. Watch out for Centerville. They're always. As always. And you're right. And Jack. And uh, I want to ask everybody a personally personal request to please come out to the to the state dual meets. And if you don't, only going to come at one time. Come for the finals. And support Great Bridge if they get in there, or or, or Salem if they get there. Right. Let's show everyone across the state that the place to have the state dual meets are here right. in the Hampton Roads area. I agree. After you go, make sure on Monday at four. To turn it on channel 23. That's right. And or Thursday, Thursday at 7. That's that. Or Saturday at 12 for the best of high school sports. And if you've got any good nicknames, we still got some matches left. And remember, we're going to be doing the regionals, and a lot of teams are in the regionals, so we'll look at anybody's nickname. That's right. And if we don't like it, we'll use it for somebody else. <laughs> or we just won't use it. <laughs> we don't like it. Well, we won't use it. 6 to 2, the score now headed into the third period. Charles Houck, the rat, up by 4, 6 to 2 over Ramsey. The rat is scurrying his points together. Yes, he is. <laughs> He's going to let Ramsey go. Make it 6-3. Out, not ranked. Got to be one of those guys on the bubble. Somewhere between... Uh, Five and ten, I would say. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, at least right around five. His record for the regular season. Charles Houck, 14 and three. Pretty impressive. Not bad. And he's looking he's looking Two sharp six. here in the finals. Two points there for the Rat. Make it eight and three. See him as a top five guy, Frank? Chance to advance? Tough. Heavyweight is a tough division this year. And that's unusual. There's only one spot left. It's only one stop, but I see it. There's only one spot left, and that's number four. As far as I see it, the top three will be battled out between Lake Taylor, Kellum, and Cox. Well, look at how nice. the the rat. Him on his back. Definitely getting some back points. Could be the pin here with 57 seconds. He has time to work. Look, he's not using any hands. He's doing the surfboard pinning combination. And he gets the pin. Charles Houck, the rat. Takes out a little frustration that he said he was going to take out. Gets the pin over Ramsey. You got the no hands, Mom. You That's see that? right. Yeah. And that'll make it 42-15. That's the final here as the Wildcats beat the Sun Devils. 38 seconds were left in that first period. Or the third period, rather. 42-15. I'm sorry. Yeah, 42-15. Maybe okay. the Wildcats. Let's take a look back. Jimmy Hawthorne and Chip Reyes come out at 103, and ta Salem takes the six-point lead, six to nothing, over the Wildcats, and a pin in the first period by Reyes, which wasn't a surprise, but we didn't expect Hawthorne to get pinned. Right. Yeah, well, the Hawk, I mean, look, the Hawk is a tough cookie, but 
again, uh, Reyes's overall experience in big match situations with the big boys paid off there. Darnell and Blankenfor at 112. Sean's toughest opponent. He knew that coming in. Six to two, the final. Sean gets the big win there. A takedown in the first period, a reversal in the second, another takedown in the third for Darnell. Carl Perry seems to be on a roll as he's moving his way towards the state tournament. Rich at 119. He gets a pin in the second period. Great Bridge on top, 9-6. 125. Aaron Beetson and Roman Copeland. And Great Bridge gets the win there. They make the score 12 to 6. And we go to 130. Garcia and Hunter Beetson. Carlos uh, uh, Garcia gets the win there. 4 to nothing. the final score. At 135. Boucre and Scott Dustin. Aaron Boucre, the ranked wrestler for Salem. However, Dustin does very well and gets an 8 5 win. And the score was 15 to 9. Let's go to Frank Lapoli now. We'll finish the recap after we talk to the Wildcats. Okay, here we are with the familiar side. A surprise to no one. Great Bridge wins your third, third regional dual meet. Third, I think. I lose track of them. There's so, there's so many of them going on. This is another Martin here, right here. Oh, slow down, guys. All right, here we go. Get your own show. All right, now, well, he's coach. Uh, I made a opinion. I think that this team this year, probably, in my opinion, has more overall balance than the team you had last year. Last year, you had some guys that some proven, proven in their statement that this is a very, very good team. You must be proud of them. Yeah, um, they've come a long ways, but um, our main focus is next week on the state duels. And then the yeah. following in a month in the state tournament. Those are two goals. Those are the things that we need to secure. And everything in between now and then, the next four weekends are very important. Looking yeah. forward to, new, to next weekend, who out of the region uh, gives you any concern? Probably uh, Centerville and Selim on the opposite side of the bracket. They're going to hit first round, so probably the winner of that is going to be the one to contend with. Well, I know, I'm going to break this to you right now. Centerville, I don't care who they get, they're not going to come close to this Great Bridge team because this Great Bridge team is destined for greatness. Great Bridge Wildcats. The regional champions. Congratulations. Mickey, let's wrap up that wrap-up. Okay. David Todd wins at 148-2. Michael Harper, the Piranha, wins 12-9. The score at that point at 145, 21-9 Wildcats. Frank Smith gets an easy pin in the first period uh, to make it 27-9. At 160, Billy Allred has his way and wins 16-6. The score 31-9. Josh Fannin gets a pin, 37-9. Joey Guth loses, and Great Bridge uh, loses by a pin. Great Bridge loses a point also to make the score 36-15. Great Bridge, and Charles Hout gets the pin, the rat, at heavyweight to make the score 42-15, the final. Thanks a lot, Mickey. Be with us next week. We'll be at the state dual finals here on WCTV. Join us Mondays. I'll remind you, Mondays at 4, Thursdays at 7, Saturdays at noon. 23, I'm Richie Babb along with Mickey Irving.